All right, folks, we are live with our next cafecito, and I am ecstatic to have on Dan Towns, who is uh, my, my bi-coastal bookend over in California. He is, uh, you know, he's, he's brought a lot to me in regards to being able to uh, give back, right? And, and a lot of what we've been doing in 2020 with the Cafecitos is how do we give back to people? Um, how do we help mentor and how do we help uh, you know, folks, especially now, uh, you know, who've been furloughed or laid off. So, so uh, Dan, welcome to the Cafecito. Let's have a little cheers yeah, here. Thanks, thanks Milton. It's always good to see you. I got, I got my coffee mug right here. All right. Say, this is kind of a special coffee cup. I'm going to shout out to my buddies over at um, Zylo. I got to, uh, if you don't know about Zylo, you should check them out. They're a um, really interesting company um, for um, procurement, purchasing, license management, things like that. So uh, anyway, but anyway, good to be here. Thanks for nice, having me. thank you. And I got uh, this cafecito I brought to you, my, my Cape Cod mug, uh, okay. which, you know, the family and I have been on vacation a couple of times and uh, I have some great stories uh, in California where you're at. The you poppies, the poppies are out, and it's beautiful. Springtime, the poppies are out. Yeah, yeah it just snowed over here. It's it's the middle of May, and it just snowed. I, I'm just saying. Um, but you know, Dan comes to us with 15 years of recruiting experience and a ton of years of development, IT, and other experience. And I and I really wanted to have him on because he recently started to post a few uh, pieces. One where he's offering a free consultation uh, to help you kind of define your digital presence and your persona and your brand. And I said to myself, I'm like, I gotta have him on. I gotta get some nuggets from him on what that means, especially today, again, given where we're at and what's going on, but also just in general, right? So, but Dan, talk to me about the, the, the kind of folks that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis that you do this personal branding and kind of recruitment work with. Yeah, no, thanks for bringing it up. Um, you know, the personal brand stuff is something that I've done for, for many, many years. Um, helping folks really get noticed. And you know, so many people are looking for jobs, particularly now with the whole you know pandemic and the furloughed and things like that. So what we're doing is free consultations for folks to really identify and communicate what is my value at. And we help them to really create a personal brand that crosses you know, from their resume to their LinkedIn profile to their other, you know, social media uh, environment so that so that they're kind of at the top of that pyramid, right? And they become um, and, and are viewed as, if you will, um, the leader in that particular domain. So it's a lot of fun. We get to really help people steer their career and really go find where they want to be, where their passion is. It's pretty exciting stuff. So you're offering a kind of a free consultation to that, but obviously you've got the day job where you, you, you know, you, you do the recruiting, you do the coaching and you do other pieces. And I think one of the things that I, I found compelling was um, what you had told me about the coaching aspect of what you do with regards to being able to kind of derive value and kind of re being able to, you know, give a person a, a, a checklist of things that they do the self-assessment. Talk to me a little bit about what you do there. Yeah, so, you know, coaching is one of those things in the career world, we'll say, uh, that kind of goes unnoticed. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those opportunities to be able to take a step back, see the forest for the trees, to get a mirror perspective or a reflection from somebody else who deals with this stuff every day around how, how do I conduct an interview? You know, what, what are the questions that I should be asking the, the client or the company or the position that I'm, you know, looking looking at? Um, so, so, you know, the coaching aspect is really helping people um, identify where they're at and where they want to go. So we run them through a complete uh, exercise, a career survey, if you were, will. And we get all these data points and we use that to build, them, you know, the resume, the LinkedIn profile, all those kinds of things. Um, so the coaching piece really helps them get through that interview process. You know, helps them to uh, know what kind of questions to ask, uh, know and identify, you know, where they want to be, all those kinds of things. So, you know, you have three languages listed on your LinkedIn profile, right? And I'm like, wow, okay, but, you know, it, he must be, you know, he must be fluent in all three. But talk to me about why you have all three there, right? Obviously, English is one of them. 
Yeah. But I think it's I think it's good for he, people to hear why you have the other two. Well, you know, English number one, obviously I'm native. Somebody might some folks may say I don't get my words put together correctly. But that's just that's that's the first one. <laughs> I said, does anybody know this about me? But um, my wife is actually from Romania. Grew up during the you know, communist era and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to be able to speak to her mom, who's you know 80 years old now, uh, international international language, and be able to ask and pose questions to her and things like that. And then uh, the Italian stuff comes from um, just a, a desire to learn and know more about cultures. And we have some dear friends that now live in uh, Sicily, and so. Uh, it's fun to learn those languages and stuff. So I don't speak right, any right. of them very well. <laughs> I well, can speak it, five languages, so I'm completely outgunned on a typical day. Right. So, so you know, when you're when, and to me, I think that's a compelling story, right? That that you included it in your profile, and you created a narrative, right, with whoever saw that, whether it was a recruiter or otherwise, um, and and I think that's something that's important. Uh, for folks, right? So if you're looking at a personal branding piece, um, talk to me about, you know, for me, one of them is personalizing profile, but talk to me about other things that you just off the top of your head suggest to folks. You mean around uh, the particular skills or, or more like the things I like, like woodworking? Yeah, so, yeah, so for me, if, if I'm building my LinkedIn profile or my resume, talk to me about how I personalize that. Just anything in general with regards yeah. to that profile, because it was really, the languages piece to me was nice, a nice little pad that you had. You know, one of the big things that comes up for folks is, you know, how do I get noticed? And so when I coach folks on, around developing their LinkedIn profile, I always remind them that we live in a keyword search world. So if your skills are all on your, you know, your resume, at, but you don't have that mirrored, if you will, on your LinkedIn profile, it doesn't have to be exact. Right. But the key thing, so if you are an ERP, SAP implementation guy, or BPC, or EPM, you know, all those acronyms that we in the IT space all know about, those things should definitely be listed, peppered through your LinkedIn right. profile. Because when, when recruiters are looking for you, on the other end of, of the, the back side of the profile, right, the search engine part from LinkedIn, we're putting in our keywords that we're looking for. Right. And that spins up a search of people, right? And then when we click on them, those components highlighted throughout there. So if you're looking for a, you know, senior product manager job, and you don't have anything listed about product management and what you've done, or product releases, or product matrices, um, all those kinds of things, right? Um, leading by data uh, associated with a product that you're building, you know, particularly for a SaaS company, those right. things should be linked. Um, and so what we do in our coaching and branding process is help folks go through the exercise to remind themselves, oh, then I do have this, and oh my gosh, it's not listed in the areas that, you know, I flourish in. Right. And, well, yeah, so that's, that's, yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot so it's, it's interesting you say that because it just sparked a couple of things in my head. So number one, if you don't know where in your LinkedIn profile you need to go to, you need to go to your profile your dashboard and you look, need to look at search appearances. Yeah. And I have to tell you, Dan, I, I, I've, I've been playing around with, you know, kind of testing a lot of keywords, a lot of, you know, whether it's a title or the content or otherwise. And I came to the realization, I think earlier in the year or so, like I need to remove certain things from my title or otherwise, because I'm getting found for the wrong things, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and that was that was a nice learning for me. I mean, been, been in this really long, long time, but still, it was a nice learning because I thought I was being found for the right thing, right? It was, you know, whether it was senior position, but it was these other words that I kept including that I kept being found on. So yeah. by going into that search appearances was one. The other thing is, and it ties to a conversation we had earlier today about um, learning and one of the five key areas to learn, right? And at first I thought it was a little ridiculous that one of the five key skills that you know folks should upskill on was SEO and marketing. But talk to me about why you think that fifth one is important, right? And again, tied to what you just said. Yeah, well, I mean, that goes back to we live in a keyword search world, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, and it's all about SEO nowadays, search engine optimization. And Thank you. if your LinkedIn profile is not optimized, 
and it's a de facto tool that recruiters you know use you're not going to get um, right. so you know, i know linkedin has that little thing where you can say you know um it's a little button that you can click that alerts recruiters that you're you know that you're on the market right, right? if right. you have a subscription in linkedin you as a recruiter or i as a recruiter can can see that but that right. doesn't necessarily mean you're qualified for the role you know the role that we're looking for right right so having all those things peppered in your uh profile you know the more the merrier within reason i'll say uh is a good thing to have. yeah no it's it's, it's, a, it's a great tip and, and especially uh, monitoring that it only they only give you a snapshot every week Right, so every week you can actually go ahead and adjust, you know, what you're looking for. But also gives you the the companies and their and the the um, the roles of the people that have been, you know, searching, which mm -hmm. I think is just as important, right? So if if you're, you know, and, and I'll give you a quick snapshot of where I'm at because I, I I think it's important, right? You get you get you know who's searching for you, but all of a sudden I have marketing specialists as the top type of role that's searching my profile. I'm like. All right, so it's either marketing, sales, or someone else trying to try to you know you know learn more about me, and maybe that's not where I want to be. Maybe I did something different, or I posted a new article, or something else. But it's absolutely something to keep in mind on. So that's that's a great nugget. Thank you for for that. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and that's really not the only place too, because you know LinkedIn is a major tool. It is kind of now the de facto tool where, where recruiters try to find people. It's for a lot of us though who are. Uh, a little bit more savvy, it's just one source. The other thing that's really important is getting your, your resume such that Google will find you. So that could be right. done in a number of different manners. And we talk a little bit about, you know, if I get just my resume noticed, you know, my profile, right, uh, outside of the whole LinkedIn world to be noticed. And again, this is what I was talking about earlier, you know, we're trying to build a pyramid for people such that, right. All these cornerstones out here are all focused towards the top of the iceberg or the top of the pyramid, if you will, uh, for you, you, the thought, thought leader in whatever expertise that you have. And so you got to have those across multiple sites in order to support that, to be found. I, the, the tidbits that, that, you're, that you're sharing here are perfect because, again, it's, it's important for people to understand that th these are the things they should be focusing on. And and I appreciate that. So so you know, going back to your 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 language story and, and your learning, I I did I did want to remi remind you to, to ask you. Uh, so what what what's the nickname and what's the story behind your nickname with regards to the language space? Because because <laughs> because I, I want to see if anybody in our audience translates that to something that's actually uh, uh, different than what you think it is. So, uh, so here's the story, and, and I guess it's going to be on the internet forever. Um, but uh, when I was learning Romanian, um, one of my favorite dishes that um, the Romanian make is called uh, fasoli și cârnăți, and that's basically beans with sausage, and they have some sauerkraut. It's really, really good, really, really good Romanian food. When I was learning, uh, I noticed that they were cooking that one day, and when we were in Romania visiting, and I said, "Oh, we're, we're having." Fasoli she cucunuts and came out completely wrong and everybody in the family laughed. So now my nickname in my wife's family is Cucunuts. You know, where's Cucunuts? We haven't seen Cucunuts. What's he up to these days? So anyway, so yeah, so that's the story. And uh, I took it as a compliment and endearment and it's it's a lot of fun. So nice, nice. Yeah. And, and again, I, I, I bring it up yeah, just because yourself. I, I do I do feel sometimes like I'm a bit cucunuts. Uh you know, uh, here, but uh, it's it's really, I can't thank you enough. And one for offering, you know, the free, you know, digital assessment and kind of, you know, assessment with folks. Um, and folks engaged in, you know, I'll send you, I'll have the links, I'll be sharing this video throughout. Engaged in, he's fantastic. He's out on the West Coast. He's, you know, he's got connectivity to a major technology networks, you know, Society for Information Management and others where we, you know, combined between the two of us this video and others we're here to help right uh whether it's mentoring coaching or otherwise um and uh i i you know if there's any party words or anything you have then i you know, think this this will be uh the wrap on this conference any thoughts well it's always so much fun to to speak with you and you've been a great friend for i don't know how many years now but um 
Yeah, it's it's been great. Thanks for having me on. And, and yeah, would love to hear from anybody who wants to just chat and see if I can be helpful to them. It'd be great. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much again. And that's a wrap, folks. Another cafecito down. And thanks again. Have yeah. a good one. Bye. Bye.